All right, so you want to become a candle maker in 2023. Well, this is going to be a quick list of some things that I think you should look out for and some things that you should definitely do if you're going to become a successful candle maker. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Stanley with Stanley Handcrafted, and today we're going to talk about getting into 2023. And this video is definitely geared a little bit more towards some of the new people that are coming into candle making in 2023. But I'm also going to cover a couple topics for people that are already doing candles in 2023 and some things that you should look out for, not only for a new candle maker, but for experienced candle makers also. All right, so it's the beginning of the year and there are a lot of new people coming into the candle making scene uh, with people who got candle making kits over the holidays. Now, this is a video that I kind of make about this same type of year. It changes a little bit from year to year, but it's basically an intro to candle making, uh, honestly welcoming a lot of new candle makers uh, and basically going over some of the tips that a lot of people, new candle makers, want to know just getting into this. All right, so for anybody new that's coming into the candle space, the candle making space is something that is, for one, it's a lot of fun. You can do a lot with it. There's a lot to go over. And on the other side of that, it's a great side hustle or even a great business to start. But there are a few things that you definitely want to watch out for getting into candle making as a side hustle or even as a business. Now, of course, you can find a ton of stories out there that talk about candle making, how much it's grown over the past couple of years, how much more it's going to grow in the next coming years. But that's not to say it doesn't come with its own set of hurdles. And getting into 2023, there are a whole list of new hurdles. So for anybody new to the candle making space, the first thing that I always tell people is to go out there, research as much as you can. Obviously, you're doing that right now watching these videos. There are a lot of great YouTube channels out there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and link to a few more aside from mine down in the video description down below. So definitely jump over there, look into a few different channels and obviously find the person uh, that you want to learn from because everybody's teaching style is very different. And of course, bouncing from channel to channel, you get a lot of different ideas, a lot of different testing techniques. And then of course, once you've done your research, what you're gonna wanna do after that is you're gonna wanna dive into basically where you wanna start with your candles. What kind of candles do you wanna make? Do you wanna make jar candles or pillar candles or even dessert style candles? There are a bunch of different ones you can choose from, but once you narrow it down, from there you're gonna wanna choose your waxes and your jars. And to anybody that's been watching this channel for a while, this is going to seem a little basic, but to somebody new, this is something that you definitely don't know or may not know, but you definitely should know. And that, of course, is choosing the wax that you want to work with. And the reason I say you want to choose the wax you want to work with is because when you go into testing, there are a bunch of different waxes out there and they all behave different depending on the fragrance oils that you use, the wicks that you use. So having one that you really like the sound of, whether it's going with a paraffin or a coconut wax or a soy wax or any other type of blend that's out there, you wanna pick one that you're gonna stick with for a while and while you go through the testing phase, which can take quite a while sometimes. From there, you're going to want to choose your jar. And when I say jar, you're going to want to pick a vessel that you're going to want to use. Something simple. It doesn't have to be anything like this. This is just a nine ounce straight jar. They're pretty easy to find pretty much anywhere you go. Any of the candle making websites, you can find this jar pretty easy. So I always recommend something along this line, uh, like a little status jar, a jelly jar. Uh, these nine ounce straight jars are real easy. Uh, the reason I recommend these is because, like I said, you can find them everywhere. You're not going to get into a position where you find a vessel that you really love, uh, you start testing with it, and then a month into it, you can no longer find it at any of the shops. So this is something I stress to a lot of new candle makers. Choose your wax that you want to work with, find one jar that you want to work with, and then from there, you're going to be doing a lot of testing. You're going to be choosing different oils. You're going to be choosing different wicks. And those, it really doesn't matter what you start out with because you're going to be starting out with a bunch. When it comes down to wicks, you're going to want to test four, five, six, seven different styles of wicks. And what I mean by that is there are a bunch of different types of wicks, kind of how they're made. And they're named all kinds of different things from HTP to CD to LCS. And they all perform different in various waxes. So that's why I say choose your wax, choose your jar, because when you get down to testing, you're going to be testing a bunch of different oils and a bunch of different wicks. And when you're doing all that testing, it's much easier to do that. It's much easier to make progress when you have one wax and one jar that you know you're trying to perfect. And then, of course, from there, you're going to want to choose your fragrance oil. And again, I'm going to include a list of all the supplies that I think you should get into in the video description down below so that you guys know exactly what to look for. And I always tell people with the fragrance oils, there are a thousand that you can choose from. Uh, when you're in the beginning making 
candles, choose a fragrance oil that you like, something that you like to smell repeatedly because you're gonna be doing a lot of testing. And of course, more important than anything, this is supposed to be fun. And of course, having a scent that you really like and you love smelling throughout the house when you're testing is a lot more satisfying when you actually make that candle that works perfect. And the other thing I'll say is don't get discouraged. There is a lot of testing that goes with candles. Some people will nail it on the first or second batch. A lot of people will spend 30 or 40 batches before they get something that they're really happy with. So definitely don't get discouraged. Have a lot of fun with this. And if you are having a hard time figuring out what jars and what wax you want to use, I would definitely recommend some of the candle making kits that are out there. And again, I'll include a list to all the different kits that are out there. And of course, I do sell a kit if you wanted to get one at West Sound Candle Supply. It includes everything. It has the jars, the wax the wicks, the thermometer, the pouring pitchers, everything like that. And of course, not only mine, but there are a bunch of good kits out there that have a lot of different waxes. So there's a lot of good ones to choose from. All right, so let's say you make it past the candle testing phase and now you wanna move into actually selling your candles. This is a big step for your candles and a lot of people get hung up on this one because they don't know where to go to start selling their candles. So what I always tell people in the beginning is obviously if you can sell candles at work, which is what I did, uh, I took them to work, uh, friends, family, coworkers, basically just started taking them everywhere and selling candles basically anywhere I could. Now that's obviously after you've tested your candles, which you're gonna do, making sure that they burn properly, making sure that they, they smell up the room like they're supposed to do. And then of course, past like your friends and family and anything like that. The first step that I took is I just started to walk around town and look for boutiques, shops, anything like that, uh, that I, any place like that, that I thought would actually sell candles. And of course, getting into this one, there are a lot of different things that you have to look into. Some shops will just take them right off your hand. Now, of course, getting into shops requires a, a video on its own, and I will definitely make that one. And I have done one in the past that talks about getting into stores, what you need to have, uh, getting into some of the shops with certain minimums. And of course, for the people that don't want to go into shops just yet, everybody wants to get online. And now is a little bit more tricky on what you can do to get online. The biggest thing that I would say for anybody starting out is start to look for start to look for quick and easy places and honestly cheap places that you can go out there and put your candles out there and see if they're going to sell before you go out and you spend 20, 50 or $100 on your own website and start driving traffic towards that. Facebook Marketplace is a great place to go. You can do the Facebook Marketplace. You can set up a Facebook page where you can actually set up all your products on the page. And then of course, go into social media apps like Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, anything like that. And the main reason I recommend places like this is because when you're first starting out, you don't wanna spend a lot of money on something that you're really not sure if it's gonna work. So Facebook Marketplace, promoting on Instagram, TikTok, these are great places to get your candles out there. But that's not to say that those avenues don't come with their own hills that you're gonna have to climb. Uh, they're very saturated markets with everything. Breaking through on Instagram isn't nearly as easy as it once was even years ago. But of course it can still be done. The other thing that you're gonna wanna do, and I probably should have said this before getting out there and selling your candles, is you're gonna wanna look into getting a license for your candle business. Now this can be done fairly cheap. I think anywhere from 30 to 50 or $60 to get a license and everything set up so that you're actually a registered business with the state. And then once you get your license and you get your actual business name established, what you're gonna wanna do is start looking into insurance. Now, this is definitely one of those areas that I didn't get into right away. I didn't get a business license for quite a while. I uh, just never thought about it in the beginning. I was only selling candles to family, friends, coworkers, and it was doing just fine. And then of course, once I wanted to actually get into shops and start selling kind of nationwide, I figured a business license uh, is probably where you wanna go. And then of course, insurance on the other side is another one that I didn't do for quite some time, uh, just because again, I didn't know that you should have something like that. But I always recommend insurance with candles because you are handing a product to somebody that is going to be basically on fire in their house. I mean, you're lighting a candle, unless you're doing something like melts or something like that. Candles, when it comes down to it, they are a fire hazard. And of course, with tons of testing, you can reduce how much of a fire hazard they actually are. And that's obviously why I recommend insurance because if, because if something happens, you do want to make sure that you and your business are covered in case something happens. Another incredible resource when you're first starting out with candles is PirateShip.com. This is gonna be probably your cheapest way to get shipping for your candles without going directly to UPS or the post office. And in fact, 
pirate ship is going to be a lot cheaper than both of those places. And honestly, pirate ship is going to give you bigger discounts than if you went to those places. It doesn't cost anything to sign up with them. You just create an account, go in there, you create your own shipping labels, you print them, and then you can ship all of your candles without having to have a website like Shopify or Squarespace where they handle all the shipping for you. And this is definitely an area where, like I was saying in the beginning of the video, where you're really going to want to check this stuff out because shipping over the last couple of years has gotten incredibly expensive. And this is one of those areas, especially when you're starting to make candles that you're really going to want to check out when you're ordering supplies and of course, when you're shipping your own candles. Shipping has, like I said, it's gotten very expensive. Uh, so buying like a case of wax has gone up quite a bit in the last couple of years. So you really wanna go through and itemize and figure out your cost of your candles because a lot of people will make the same mistake when they get into this is they go through, they start to buy the kit, they buy the wax, the oils, the wicks, and then they make a small candle like this one and then they throw a price on it that doesn't match what they actually paid for in material cost. And if you're unsure on how to do that, I've got other videos that show you exactly how to calculate your cost. And I also have a cost calculator on my website. Again, it's on westsoundcandlesupply.com and it's under the learn tab. But again, a really good resource that I created for people so you can actually go in there and put the cost of all your products, your wicks, your oils, your, your wax, your shipping costs, and it will tell you how much this candle is gonna cost per candle. And then of course, from there, you're gonna wanna adjust that to figure out what your wholesale prices are and what your retail prices are. All right, this video is definitely stretching out. I could probably do a part two on this one. If I missed anything in this video, which I know I did, uh, please let me know in the comment section down below what you'd like to see in a part two of this one. But I definitely wanted to make an intro for a lot of the new candle makers that are coming into the space and say, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, happy candle making, and we'll see you in the next video.